I'm sitting down today in the spotlight with the talented Royce of Mr. Music, Karaoke, and DJ Services out of Payson. Unlike me, who is out of his mind, this gentleman is stable and available for music and entertainment for your next celebration. Am I right? Yes, I just don't know how stable, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we are truly birds of a feather. Um, yes, sir. I, I must say that I do a lot of these, and you are true to the DJ professionalism and that you were 10 minutes early. And that is not only appreciated, it, it's a testament to uh, your respect to people's time and any professional, whether you're a caterer, DJ, photo booth, uh, early is on time on time is late and late we don't talk about that's and, right and and i thought that you might resemble that uh, comment so i thought i would share it and you're pacing yes i'm in pacing white what's those white mountains well if you get technical pay, the pacing is called is called the muggy on rim area and uh we're just below the the again rim heading up toward heber and up to the white mountains the white mountains is considered anything pretty much above the rim, heading east towards all the way to Alpine, as a matter of fact. But you service that area, yes? Yes, sir. I, I, when I started my business back in 1997, uh, I started here in Payson, but most of my weddings has all, have always been in the White Mountains. Uh, I do a lot in Greer, Pine Top Lakeside, Sholo, and up in that area. Flag? Flagstaff? I do Flagstaff. In fact, I just did one Monday night in Flagstaff. Um it's, it's showing what's going on right now. Uh, midweek work was, you know, BC, what I call BC before COVID, um, mm -hmm. was rare, but it happened. And now there's such pent up demand for uh, getting married and celebrating and all of that, that uh, even a Monday wedding or Wednesday wedding is not uncommon. And, and I used to tell a lot of my clients that if they were looking for an other than a Saturday wedding, that they had some opportunities to get pretty good discounts from venues, from all, all vendors as well. And now um, it's quite it's quite amazing this year. Um, after the loss we took last year and this year is just booming. So I cannot complain and I won't even start. It's a great reminder that couples who are who were accustomed to everybody looking for work and saying, I'm available, I'm available. Now, all of a sudden, couples are having to actually look to find someone who is available. That is correct. And sure, they seem to be waiting till the very last moment in some cases, which of course is not helpful. It's not helpful, but we recognize that that is kind of the sign of the times for probably the next easily six months to probably the next 18 months until things correct. settle back into whatever is going to be the new normal. Right, that's exactly right. And, and, and we're talking about all this stuff, but we really want to talk about you and what okay. you do as a DJ. You know, I recognize that when, as a DJ myself, and I tell people I'm a disc jockey, then they say, oh, what radio station? Right? Or followed by what nightclub? Um, and I, I don't really know your background. So let's talk about how you got started. Back in 1997, um a gentleman owned the company, Mr. Music Karaoke, and was here in the Payson area. And I used to go sing. I love to sing. I, I think I'm pretty good. You know, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy singing. And uh, this gentleman, he actually asked me, he said, look, I'd like to start a second system and have you work for me. Would you be interested? I said, sure. I you know, always could use a little extra money to, to do with whatever. And he hired me built the second system. I started doing events. And within two months, he, he said, look, Royce, everybody wants to hire you. They're really not interested in hiring me anymore. Do you want to buy the business? And I said, really? I thought about it for a little bit. And I thought, well, you know, the money's, the money was there. And that was back in 97 when you were making like $125 a night or $175 a night, you know? And I said, sure. And I bought it from him. And uh, then I added the DJ services on the back end. I then got the name uh, copyrighted and uh, kept on boogieing. And I started doing weddings for friends and family in the Payson area at that time. 
Um, and then as I moved around the state, because at that time I worked for Budweiser uh, for 21 and a half years, and I was moving all around the state with Budweiser. This was kind of my weekend and evening gig that I did and enjoyed it. Uh, but I kept going, kept doing weddings. Got uh, I was in Tucson for a while, in Casa Grande for a while. And then when I finished down there and finished with Budweiser, I retired from them and went to Northland Pioneer College up in the White Mountains, up in the Sholo Snowflake area. And then restarted doing my weddings up there. Got very busy very quickly. And uh, I really, I, I can honestly say I've never done any paid advertising. I've done a lot of stuff on Facebook. Uh, and I haven't even done any of their paid advertising yet. So if I can stay this busy with just word of mouth, then I'm doing okay, I believe, you know. And you're full time now? No, sir. I'm still, I still, I work for a telecommunications company out of Dallas, Texas, and I still do this very, very full-time, part-time. How does that sound? Fair enough. Well, it sounds like you're busy enough to be full-time, um, and obviously your popularity is allowing your business to continue to stay stable, so you must be doing something right, as you say. So yes, kudos sir. for you, my friend. Thank you. Um, so what do you attribute the popularity of your DJ services too? Definitely word of mouth. I have, in fact, people that I did their wedding in, in the first year, 97, 98, um, I'm now doing their kids' weddings and they wouldn't have anybody else do them type thing. Um, I got involved and started networking with some of the people up in the White Mountains that we actually have a group called uh, the the Greer I Do Crew, and with the hashtag, <laughs> hashtag when wherever we're doing weddings up there. Um, I then started making contacts in the Phoenix area, Flagstaff area, and just slowly but surely getting my name out there and working to work with other vendors. Uh, I think that I really take one thing to the table is that when when we're finished with the wedding. I think the vendors say, yeah, I, I could, I could, I would definitely recommend him or I would, you know, I enjoyed working with him. That's what I try to do is work really, really hard to get the vendors to work with the vendors in such a professional way that they look at the ability of pushing me forward to other people. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, I think that's entirely what attributes my success. I, I, I put on a, a good show I'm very easy to work with, and I take care of my brides. That's really about all I do. Now, I will say that I have not done the karaoke in a long time. Oh, uh, but it's still part of the name. It's still, it's still part of the name because I don't want to change it because I still can do it. But I, that the days of working bars, <laughs> I think I'm a little bit too old for that right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember my nightclub days as well, and they are well behind me. Um, well, because I can remember yep. what we used to refer to as the bar smell, which was oh. cigarettes and alcohol and dancing people sweating. <laughs> yep. And and going home and taking a shower before you ever stepped into the bedroom to get in bed because your wife would just tell you otherwise. Only if you wanted to stay married. Correct. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I understand completely. Yeah, um, we, we definitely uh, understand each other. But you mentioned the show. So, you know, some some DJs are what I refer to as a peacock. It's like, hey, look at me, look at me. You know, my pink shirt is probably a good example. I'm the peacock. Um, but you strike me as more down to earth, more humble, and perhaps a little bit more in the background. But I could be mistaken because you said show. So what does that mean to you? And how, and how does it affect what your audience sees? Well, I will have to admit that, yes, I am a little bit more in the background. Um, you know, I work hard with the bride, the photographers, and everybody else to make sure that wherever I set up for the event, I'm not in the picture frame. I don't need to be in their picture frame, you know, um, and it, it kind of is uh, uh, kind of a slash against me sometimes because I don't get those fantastic photos that have the, the, the dance floor hopping and, you know, you see me in the background. I don't get those photos sometimes because of that. But I make sure that I'm not 
you know, I'm not as good looking as you are. Sorry. I, I <laughs> look as good in a suit. So I, you know, I, I do dress up. I am professional and I give them a quality performance. And like you said, I may not be that, that showman as an out in your face, but I give them a nice constant presentation that keeps them going uh, that can change at the drop of a hat, doesn't worry about a change. I adapt quickly, you know, and uh, I think that's what I bring to the table. Okay, so I'm going to ask the DJ trap question because uh, p clients always ask me this question and I always have a, a vague answer. So now it's my turn to turn the tables and ask you, Okay. What's your favorite kind of music? <laughs> the kind that gets the people on the dance floor and keeps it hopping. <laughs> That's the right answer. <laughs> that is the right answer. <laughs> um, you know, it doesn't matter if you listen to 70s or disco or heavy metal rock and roll or blues. It, what really matters is not what you like as a DJ, but what will keep the dance floor packed. And, that's, and that's exactly what you described. And that is truly, from my perspective, the right answer. I know couples will be happy to hear that as well. Thank you. Yes. You know, it, it's funny. Um, I'll have some clients that will say, I want this particular type of music. And I, no problem at all. I, I, if I ask, is there the ad adaptation to be a variation of that so I can bring in a lot of other type of music? And if they say no, then I respect their wishes and do exactly what they want. If not, I'll bring in some 70s rock and roll, you know, some uh, play that funky music, white boy stuff, just to get just to get the people that are there as older adults out on the dance floor and enjoy themselves. And before you know it, they're dancing to the twist. They're dancing to just about everything. I'll, I'll play it all and I'll play it in such a way that it comes out to have a natural design and, and curve to it and and I get right back to what they want and play their stuff. And I just throw in some of my own on the, on the way. Yeah, it, it's so important to recognize that there are adults and there are young people and there's the, the middle ground. And having a variation of that music allows for everyone to have a good time as opposed to, well, the kids danced and the adults went home early. Or right. the adults danced all night long and the kids were out doing something like they weren't supposed to. Um. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and I also, when I'm talking to a bride <clears throat> uh, in the very beginning, I'll ask her simple questions of how many people you think you're going to have, um, how many grandparents and or that age people do you think you will have? And, and they ask, why is that? And I say, because more than likely they're going to leave shortly after dinner or shortly you know, after a couple things have happened. So let's get them a couple of cheek to cheek songs they can dance to early on. And then you know that, that grandma and grandpa had a good time before they left and went home. Mm -hmm. They understand that and they appreciate it and it works out well. Mm -hmm. It also lets them know that the music is going to transition later in the evening to what they want to hear or dance exactly. to. Exactly, exactly right. Very good. So everybody has this like, thing you know like this dj over here he has this love story and he does this whole you know how they met and and their first uh, you know whatever and then other djs they have this they're all about the wiki 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 and the mix and they do this special mix or something um is there something that you do that distinguishes you as who you are and what you bring to the party you know, I really don't know there is. Um, and, and the reason I say that is because <clears throat> after all these years and all the weddings that I've done, I've realized that I have to change some more, okay? And I'm kind of redeveloping the way I'm doing things. Uh, there for a long time, I didn't have a good light set up for the dance floor. And just recently, I got all that purchased and have been using it and learning how and doing all that type of stuff. And... Um, the other thing I, I really think is so cool, and somewhere down the line, I might steal a page out of your book. I like the idea of the the big, huge display screen that shows, you know, things that are going on. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm still learning. I, I I learn from. I like to watch other DJs. I like to see what they do. Take a little bit of their fantasticness 
and see if I can adapt it to me. Um, I, I, you know, I, I am just really just kind of the old reliable, you know, I kind of old reliable that gives you a quality performance. I mean, I will every once in a while while the um, maid of honor is looking for her speech on her phone. I might, you know, sneak up there and play that little song from Jeopardy, na, 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 na. <laughs> you know, and let everybody laugh. But but I've already told them that I might do that mm -hmm. so that it doesn't hurt their feelings. That's the last thing I'd want to do. But I like to get the crowd laughing, having fun. Um, the, 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 the plain old simple shoe game, you know, I've developed some questions that are a little bit different than everybody else, you know, just so that they will make everybody giggle because you know they're not going to agree every time you ask the question. So I like to use that as an icebreaker to get things moving in the right direction. You know, sometimes I'll even offer to have the bride and groom do that right after they finish dinner so that everybody else is sitting down and it just creates a good, pleasant atmosphere to join now. So let's start the reception and really rock the house, you know? I love that. You mentioned the shoe game mm -hmm. and I, I can't resist sharing with you a quick tip Okay. As to something that you can do that would be what I refer to as a segue from one moment into the next. Okay. And your last question, it's not just for the couple to answer, right? Mm -hmm. But it, you invite the entire audience to stand next to the couple that they think mm -hmm. has the right answer or which is the correct person. And that brings everybody to the dance floor, which allows you then to immediately segue into a party dance song. And they're right there, ready to roll. Very cool. I like that idea. Thank you. Yeah. You're very welcome. And I've just proved my point about what makes you special. You What's see, that? well, because there's so many event professionals who are very rigid and closed minded and they're just about always doing the same show at the same time for the for a different couple. <clears throat> and that's not you. You no. obviously are open to new. You're expanding your light show. You're listening to what other DJs are saying. And that allows you to keep what you bring to the party fresh. And that is what makes you special. Well, thank you. I, yeah, I, I, never, I never realized it, but I, I, I have to agree with what you said there. I appreciate that. You are very welcome. If you were going to give one tip, one idea, <clears throat> one, you, you should know this, or most people don't know this and you should kind of thing for couples that are looking for music and entertainment for their wedding, what would you suggest besides hire Mr. Music Karaoke? <laughs> I'd suggest that you interview your vendors. Okay. I believe that everybody, you know, the, everybody likes to just send me a price and, and I'll let, get back with you. No, interview the people. Make sure you're a fit, you know, or that I, that I as a DJ am a fit for your personality for your wedding. If I'm not, then that way you know and you don't hire me. You go to another DJ. And I often tell my brides, if you're looking for that wicka wicka DJ, I'm not him. I apologize, but I can send you to somebody that is. And I will refer, I refer people daily to other brides that if I'm busy or if that's what they're looking for, I know that ahead of time that I'm not that person and I'll forward it on. But I would suggest bride and groom take the time to interview your vendors to make sure they fit your personality and what you're looking for. That is a great piece of advice. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to sit down with us today in the spotlight, Rice. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I really appreciate you doing this.